Uh, we return to the morning show with Terry, and joining us, we are lucky enough to have Rachel Yamagata joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank here you for today. having good, me. Good, good. Uh, you're playing here in Taipei tonight, and uh, we're all excited. You're playing at the ATT uh, Show Box, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, before we do, uh, tell me a little bit about what you know about Taiwan. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people in a small amount of space. <laughs> uh, uh, that's very true, very and, true. Um, just from, we, we haven't been here too long, but a, a couple of days and nights to look around, and it reminds me of New York City or just bustling places with people driving crazy on their scooters yeah, and, right. you know, a lot of nightlife and... Um, I don't know that much except there's beautiful views and beaches on in parts of uh, Taiwan that I wish we had time to see and great hikes and yeah, and things is. like that but um, I'm I'm up for learning. What should I know? I know a little bit about the food now too. Yeah, no, getting some of that in definitely, there. definitely the food. Well, you, yeah. you you nailed it. Some of the some of the scenery outside of the cities are is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes cities, I'm sure, probably all look the same uh, to a certain degree. But yeah, no, beautiful, beautiful countryside, beautiful mountains mm -hmm. and, and beaches and all the rest, and the food as yes. you mentioned. You know, between uh, you and and your your Taiwanese fans, there's there, there's sort of a lot of um, integers, if I can, mm -hmm. meaning that you know you, you presumably had an agent set this up, and you have a manager who kind of works through things, and you've got a tour manager, and there's a promoter that does things locally. But how do you kind of keep your thumb on the pulse of the places that you you visit, like Taiwan? Um. Well, I'm lucky to travel with uh, bandmates that are very curious. Um, I mean, I, I'm somewhat shy, so I have a tendency to hole up and um, really have to be drawn out. You wouldn't think that because I've chosen this career path that has me in front of people all of the time. But um, I have these uh, guys who are up for adventure, and they're mm. always investigating the next thing we should go see. So whenever we land in a particular spot, um, one of, especially our guitarist, Michael Chavez, we call him Julie, the cruise director, and he's <laughs> always got a plan of the hippest restaurant or nightclub or um, a museum or temple or whatever it is. And, and yeah. so uh, he's definitely a leader of the pack in terms of getting to uh, explore a place, a new place especially, and he's very, um, just outgoing and social so he meets lots of friends right, and right, right. stays in touch um so that part of it i really do rely on my bandmates who become your family and you and mm -hmm. you have these adventures with each other um and then you know the the business side of it um i actually am working without a manager and i've been without one for about oh, okay. three and a half years so i've learned a lot about um uh, sort of a bird's eye view on scheduling and places I would like to go. Mm -hmm. And I work closely with um, agents and and um, who are working with these great promoters that help me come to a place like Taipei where I've never been. And mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what to expect from the audience. Yeah, right. So I think they really do so much legwork of introducing me to this potential new fan base so yeah, right. I, I really rely on that as how, well. how close are you to your own social media meaning uh you know do you hear from the fans directly and, sure. and, and sort of have an idea as to what taipei may be expecting or that well sort of thing? somebody's already um suggested i try stinky tofu and yeah, right, okay. um the oysters is it the yeah, okay so the uh, jian, which is the oyster yes yeah, so okay. they're um definitely suggesting foods to okay, uh, to try and um, i've been posting pictures of a couple of things that we've been seeing and just a lot of nice comments of um, welcome to Taipei yeah, or right. we're so glad you're here in Taiwan and um, but yeah I do all of the Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and you do that all, all yourself I okay. do, yeah. oh, excellent mm -hmm. Um, so if people wanted to come see you tonight and maybe they weren't familiar with uh, Rachel Yamagata mm -hmm. what can they expect at a at a Rachel Yamagata show uh, we're very dynamic. Um, you know, if you listen to my music, there's a lot of heartache songs. There's a little bit of rock in there, a little bit of jazz, um, a lot of themes on love gone wrong. And I think what's special about our shows is that uh, they're actually very uplifting and very funny and very energetic. I, I started um, years and years ago in a funk band, and it was... Um, multiple singers and the the 
references to their uh, their music were Sly Stone and P-Funk and these really great like soul bands on stage so I learned how to navigate the chemistry of interacting with a live audience in a way that wasn't just oh I'm so sad and I'm gonna play my sad songs like they're much more dynamic um, than I think one might expect and I love um, spontaneity in shows so anything goes in terms of um, what you might see. We, we just played a show in Singapore and there's one ballad that I've been playing for 10 years and I just forgot the chords. I forgot the beginning chords. I could not remember to mm. save my life. So I just stood up and I changed, got it away from the piano and did it acapella. <laughs> I yeah, was right, like, I'm right. still going to do it. And which I've done acapella before, but I was not expecting it to do that night. And, and people loved it. And we were jumping on the guitarist I was telling you about got on this box and he's like we're not supposed to stand on this box and I said well what box so I stood on that we're playing guitar on this box and mind you I don't predict stage diving for this show but you know (laughs) I do like the idea that you never get the same show twice right right now as far as the Rachel Yamagata fan is concerned Mm -hmm. what can we expect in terms of the material you will touch on uh, a collection of things. Um, my first album, Happenstance, came out in 2004, and I think um, m- many people know me from that record, so we'll definitely play a few of the staples from that. And um, I have a new record coming out in a few months, so we're going to have sort of this repertoire of through the years material some some is more piano based internal and then there's rock songs straight up sort of big full band experiences so um musically i think it'll it'll play on a really nice flow of energy throughout the night yeah right right um, let's talk just about the future. You said you've got uh, a new album coming out in a few months, mm-hmm. so you're going to be previewing material and whatnot. But what mm-hmm. what can we expect then for say uh, the next year? If fans, what can fans look forward to? Sure. Um, well, I'll be finishing that record uh, when I get back from um, not quite back from Asia, but I have Asia, and then I go straight on to a tour opening for David Gray and Amos oh, Lee. Nice, yeah. So I'll do a few weeks of that, and then um, we're basically in the mixing stage of the new record, so a lot of the um, end of July, August will be surrounding just the artwork of the record and video promotion and that kind of thing. And the fall, I have a European tour planned, and that goes straight into a U.S. tour that will end by late November. So so you've got the rest of the year mapped out. It's pretty much mapped out, yeah. I would... um, We've been on the road for a long time Uh, since last September. I just kind of keep scheduling tours. And, um, you know, for me nowadays, especially nowadays, live performance is such a necessary, wonderful thing in order to keep um, interacting with your fans on a personal level. And there's a lot of music out there. And I think the most you can do, the more you can do as an artist to... Um, keep that connection fresh the better Mm -hmm. so that's what I've been is there anything different you've done on the new record as opposed to the past or is uh, are you using something that you feel is uh, inherently you all the time the the new record is interesting because I've taken on the role of production much more fully Um, you know I think an artist is always there's no way they can't be a producer of sorts on a record they're involved in but for this particular record I started writing and recording um, with Pete actually my uh, sound engineer and we started last summer in my house we were doing a combination of recording in the house and a studio up in Woodstock New York which is where I live and um, and then I brought in John Alasia who's been a producer on past records of mine and so I've been um, much more involved in the the formation and production of the entire uh, process, which has been interesting for me. And because of that, I've been doing things that are crazily left of center, like, you know, recording 
um, you know, a drummer playing on letter, ladders and metal ironing boards. And I had a letter that I had my friends who are French translate and into French and they're reading it underneath one of the songs that I'm experimenting with, <coughs> excuse me, um, with certain elements of, of um, tracks as well as live perform live organic drums and rhythm sections I like mm -hmm. kind of combining the two and um, you know I love Tom Waits and Nick Cave just as much as Ricky Lee Jones or Rufus Wainwright so yeah, there's right. a lot of harmonies going on the sound is very different for me okay. um, so I'm excited about that yeah excellent now tonight um, presumably most uh, uh, Rachel Yamagata fans will be there tonight but what can you? What message you want to give for anybody who's maybe going? Well, I don't really know Rachel Young, okay? mm. but I, I'm, and I'm not sure if I should go. Right. But you know, this is your opportunity right. to tell all those people. What can you tell them that will sway them and and make them go see you? Oh tonight? goodness, that's a lot of pressure. I'll give you ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, um, I think what's what's fun about discovering artists is that. Um, that moment you find somebody where you could say, oh, I was there when, you know, and I, I love coming to a place for the first time because you will never have another chance to make that first impression. And often you can have some of your most loyal fans um, come to that first show. And my biggest compliments that I get um, with people who find me, and it's always organic. Word of mouth has always been my best friend for, mm -hmm. for my music spreading. Um, they just um, give this great compliment of, I have a unique way of, of turning emotion uh, into a translation like that they can understand. And there's a lot of people who say I help them um, get through pain or relationships or somehow find a way to uh, push through situations that they have not been able to express for themselves. And um, so I guess I would say if you're having any kind of life challenge, and I'm big on synchronicity. So if, even if you're listening to this interview right now, I would say take it as a little bit of a sign that you should come right. out and like Something maybe we're meant to meet. Right. <laughs> you Excellent. Know? Excellent. And I'll also give you $10. <laughs> <laughs> well, very well put. Very well put. Well, we look forward to the show tonight. Thank you for taking the time to oh, speak with course. us. Thanks and for having me. And good luck and good luck in the future. Thank you so much.